I believe, and maybe I just believe differently, so maybe y'all need to hear what I believe. I believe everybody's a child of God, period. If you got breath in your body, you are a child of God. Atheist, transgender, homosexual, heterosexual, thief, murderer, churchgoer, bishop. Greetings, y'all, and welcome to Seek Things Above TV. I'm your host, Lucha Cooney. So today we are taking a look at Ty Tribbett's response to his Breakfast Club visit, which ended up with a lot of backlash when he said the church is whack. So we're going to get into that in just a moment. If you like content like this, please consider subscribing to the channel, liking this video, sharing the video, ringing the bell for notifications, doing the stuff that lets YouTube know you like content like this. Without further ado, let's hop right into this video. I mean, I guess I, I guess I just want to say first and foremost, I never said the church is whack. <laughs> I will never say that because I don't believe that. I believe the church is amazing. The church is you. The church is me. The church is fearfully and wonderfully made in God's image. It ain't a building. It ain't an organization. It ain't an institution. The church is us. We are the temple and the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. So we are not whack. I don't think no real church is whack. So I will never say the church is whack. I say the church systems, the institutions, and the religious practices. Uh, to me, are whack. And I admit, I, I, I agree that I could have said it a different way. Um, however, the point still remains, like... And it's not all, I, I get it, it's not all churches. I know that, I have a church. Shout out Live Church. We have a we have a, a, a body, we have a gathering, you know what I'm saying? So I don't mean every church, and I haven't been to every church in the world, so I can't be talking about every church, but the churches I'm talking about are the ones I'm talking about. So he starts off here with a very much, you know, non-apology right here. So this is a non-apology. I could have said it better, but I meant what I said, you know, could have said it better, but I meant what I said. And then he says he never said the church is whack. He said the church systems are whack. OK, but we never get a definition of what he actually means by the institutions, the so-called systems that he has problems with. Never get a clear definition of it. Nothing. It sounds like just typical progressive Christian talk, which really pushes against the idea of any kind of organization whatsoever. That's what it sounds like. Um, he says his church is fine, right? His church is fine. And, and of course that's a normal church. I'm sure that, you know, they got all the, they got structures over there, but other churches he has a problem with. We don't get the definition. We don't know what it is. And it, to me, it seems like he might be talking about maybe what he views as formalism, what he views as things being too stringent in a church, whatever those things are, we just don't know, but he's okay with having his church, but other churches have a problem. The institutions I'm talking about are the institutions I'm talking about. Uh, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, them, you know what I mean? Whoa, that's 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 who I'm talking about. It's like when when Flavor Flav and Public Enemy and all was like the police. <laughs> you ain't talking about everybody with a badge. You talking about the cops? You talking about? And everybody understood that. Uh, and not every cop got offended because they understand it's cops within their system or jurisdiction or institution that are raggedy and crooked too. So that's who I was speaking to and. <sighs> Some got some some got ruffled feathers of the word institution. Like, well, God instituted the church, so you can't. Uh, I just believe differently. I don't believe God instituted the church. I think Christ established what the church is. Upon this rock, I, I will build my church. Jesus, you are the Christ, the Son of the Living God. Whoever believes that is the church. Whatever person believes that becomes the the, the church. So Jesus established the church, but man institutionalized it. Man put uh, systems, stipulations, their, you know, institute. Uh, I heard somebody say uh, the church, the real church is an organism. Uh, but a lot of uh, 
church churches are organizations it's an organism not an organization so the closest thing we get to an explanation of what he means by institutions and uh structures is pharisees and sadducees that's what he says he says them i'm talking about them the pharisees and the sadducees and then goes on further to say that now the church is an organism not an organization if a church is a biblical church if a church is a biblical church and is is planted on firmly on god's word then everything that is happening in that church is according to the word of God. So the appointing of elders, right? They're being or order within the church. Even the way God has even instituted in scripture, how he wants us to worship him. We have a blueprint of how we're supposed to worship him. So those things come from the scriptures. So I don't understand which structures and i keep getting back to this but it's like I, I just wish he would just explain properly because all it sounds like to me is like you have a problem with the way certain people do things and you're saying that those things are man-made but we need to know what things are man-made but we just don't get that ex explanation from him on top of that god has given order within the scriptures of how the church should be ran. Okay. What we're supposed to do in church. There is order to that. God is not the author of confusion. Hence why there were problems with the church in Corinth about how they were conducting themselves. There were things that were being corrected. There was correction being brought to how they were conducting their services, how they were conducting communion, how we're supposed to view communion, the reverence we're supposed to have, how the table should be protected from those who have not placed their faith in Christ because it is not right for them to take it and it could even cause them to die, that the judgment could come upon them. Okay, so there are things that God has put in the scriptures and there, there are structures that God has given us. There are structures. So are, do you have a problem with those or is it something else? Because God is clearly a God of organization and structure. Consider the construction of the wilderness tabernacle, the temple, how everything was detailed from what the priests were wearing to how they were to approach him. Every single thing was laid out by God. That is structure. That is structure. That is organization. He has given us organization. So for you to come with this, this, this empty phrase and not even define it, and, and then to not even defend whatever position you have is just foolish. So he just comes back on the, his social media and he's saying the same thing essentially. And notice, no form of apology. It's just simply, I could have said that better is all you're gonna get in this video. I could have said that better. But but he he actually is revealing his heart by showing us that he has no problem with what he said. The real church is an organism, not an organization. So, to me, the institutions are the organizations we put around the organism. And I believe in structure, I believe in order, I believe in all of that. The Bible says all scripture was written, inspired by God, inspired by the Holy Spirit for reproof, correction, for, uh, for doctrine, doctrine. That means ways, that means teachings, that's how we do stuff. Doctrines is systems. The Bible is written for doctrine, for systems, for for that. I just think that, that some doctrines and some systems are not good. And I say whack because that's how I talk. I'm from the Northeast. I'm from Jersey. Shout out Jerry Camden, Philly area, New York. I, I felt right at home talking to them. But they, you know, it was a non-religious setting. I could just talk how I talk. And I just thought it was whack. That's how that's just how I that's how I talk. Um so the systems and the that's also a concerning statement because as a christian you're not supposed to have some sort of uh this is secular that is sacred idea to the way you walk everything is sacred your whole entire life you're supposed to be worshiping god whatever you do do everything unto the glory of god so you shouldn't or enter a certain space and feel some level of liberty to act differently there 
and a certain space and feel liberty to act differently over here, especially if it means that somehow that is a quote unquote, letting your hair down type of liberty, a relaxing of being pastoral and being responsible and being uh, watching what you, what comes out of your mouth. Like he's just saying like, no, I, I can, there's a time when I can just relax and, and I don't even have to worry about those things. And the institutional, the, the institutions, the organizations, it's not everyone, but the, organ, the, the institutions have become industries. The institutions have become industries. And to me, that's what. I, 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 you know, and people say, uh, others have said, I'm just talking, y'all, I'm just driving, just thinking. Others have said, yo, you shouldn't have said it on that platform. They don't understand God. They don't, they, you know, they're unbelievers. They don't. <laughs> To me, that's institutionalized thinking. That they don't believe, they, they're unbelievers. And they're like, I believe, and maybe I just believe differently, so maybe y'all need to hear what I believe. I believe everybody's a child of God, period. If you got breath in your body, you are a child of God. Atheist, transgender, homosexual, heterosexual, thief, murderer, churchgoer, bishop, Everybody is a child of God. Everybody, the earth is the Lord's. The fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Everybody belongs to God. If you have not received Christ, you are lost. Now that's a different story. You're lost if you haven't received Christ, but that don't mean you're not his. So I don't believe I was in an environment of people who are, who are, who are not God's children. My brothers and sisters out there, this is trash this is utter trash what this man just said we're talking about the nature of man the nature of man and how we know from the scriptures that apart from christ apart from the regenerating power of the holy spirit bringing a spiritually dead person to life that person cannot, does not want God and is actually rejecting, actively rejecting and rebelling against God. We know that. The scriptures are clear on these things. Not everybody is a children of God. This is, it's just a flat out lie. And he kind of makes it as though there's like a, a way in which, okay, it's okay if you want to believe that, but it's okay for him not to believe that. No, Mr. Trivet. If you say you are a Christian, you have already believed that. That is utterly ridiculous. This is something that we just, we, we have to go to the scriptures for this because it's easy to talk and all this, this kind of stuff, but we need to actually, let's just look at a few texts real quick and let's just settle this very quickly. We're going to start real quick with Ephesians 2. You can see I actually have it highlighted here in Logos. As you go down, we have a beautiful passage here that people love to quote from verse 4 onwards. But verse 4 onwards is not beautiful if we don't have from verse 1 to verse 3. So, and you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience. Notice these phrases, sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. By nature, we are children of wrath. We are not children of God by nature. We are not. We are children of wrath. How about Jesus speaking and addressing the Pharisees in John chapter 8? What did he say to them? So he says, if you were, this is from verse 39. I'm going to just jump in at verse 39 here. They answered him saying, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, if you were Abraham's children, you'd be doing the works Abraham did. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. This is not what Abraham did. You are doing the works your father did. 
They said to him, we were not born of sexual immorality. We have one father, even God. Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me for I have came from God and I am here. I came not of my own accord, but he sent me. Why do you not understand what I say? It is because you cannot bear to hear my word. You are of your father, the devil, and your will is to do your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character for he's a liar and the father of lies. So Jesus is making a distinction here. Clearly there are people who belong to the devil. There are people who belong to the devil. And as we just read in Ephesians, that's all of us until we place our faith in Christ. So in first John chapter three, we have John now explaining who are the children of God. And it's interesting that in the ESV, this paragraph is actually called children of God. Okay. So it starts in uh, chapter two, verse 28 and goes into chapter three. Now listen to this. And now little children abide in him so that when he appears, we may have confidence and not shrink from him in shame at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you may be sure that everyone who practices righteousness has been born of him. See what kind of love the father has given to us so that we should be called children of God. And so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him because we shall see him as he is. So there's a distinction now. There's a distinction. People who love God, people who are children of God, follow God's commands. They, and, and if you read first John, it's basically a litmus test for whether you're in the faith or not. And some of the things that include, which Ty Tribbett is not doing is a love for the church. If you don't love your brothers, there's something wrong. There's actually something wrong in there. If you don't love the church, you don't love fellow believers. There's actually something wrong as far as your understanding of the faith. And it may prove that you're not in the faith. There are so many more places we can go to unpack this idea, but we, we shouldn't even have to be doing this. Honestly, if we're talking about somebody who's supposed to be a pastor should understand that man is in a fallen state. And that fallen state is not just simply lostness that we're all somehow children of God, but somebody's lost. No, it is actually rebellion, active rebellion and a hatred for God and idolatry of oneself, making ourselves our own God, trying to run our, our own lives and, and basically say, we don't need him. That is what we're, we do apart from God, apart from Christ, Christ saving work. We are all doomed. We're all doomed. We're haters of God apart from that. We're not people who are simply lost. When the gospels tell us that Jesus came to seek and save the lost, the lost are not simply people who are, they just don't have a, a right compass and they're walking in the wrong direction. No, the lost are all of us apart from Christ. The lost are people who are rejecting God, period. Yes, all men are made in the image of God. We are made in the image of God. We are all image bearers, but, and we're also, uh, God's creation. We are God's creation, but we are not God's children in the biblical sense of that. We are not God's children. And so to say that also, I think allows us to see why he feels comfortable in these settings, um, speaking to people as though they are believers speaking to anybody who, as though they're believers simply because they kind of talk about God a little bit. He he's, he's treated them as believers. And the sad part about that is if that's how you treat people simply because they mention God, that you, you count them as children of God, then you're never going to really share the gospel with them. You're never going to share the gospel with them because you don't see the danger that they're in. You don't see the imminent danger that they're in, if they had to die that day, you don't realize, you don't realize that I need in this moment, I need to be working towards trying to build a relationship with somebody. Yes, but I need to share the gospel with them because their soul 
is in jeopardy right now. Their soul is in danger. Their eternal destination is right now, apart from Christ, one where they're going to be facing God's wrath for all eternity. That's, that's what you have to realize. And so if you're not looking at somebody as a person who needs to hear the gospel, then you're not going to have that desperation in your ministry and that urgency to share the gospel because to you, it's like, ah, they're just lost. They're just, they're just lost, but they're children of God. The implications of this are massive. This is a very dangerous teaching that uh, Ty Tribbett is here pushing. It's very, very dangerous. And I, I'm, I'm actually fearful for those who go to his church at this moment. I'm not even trying to be funny about this or whatever, or uh, to speak in some hyperbolic terms at, at all. This is actually a, a true concern of mine now for people who go to his church, because if your pastor, or if he's one of the pastors, I don't know the structure there exactly, but if he's one of the pastors or elders or leaders or whatever, and this is the kind of teaching that is allowed in there, then I am fearful about how serious the folks there are about their walk with Christ and about the seriousness of their need to repent and to walk in holiness and to live by faith because without faith it is impossible to please God. Jesus is the way. So if you have not accepted Jesus, you're lost. So I don't think that was a, uh, the, the, the wrong platform, but that they, and Charlemagne and Jess, they admitted they went to church. Jess said, I go to church, I still pay my tithes, but I don't, you know, I don't get there as often as I can. Charlemagne said, I, I attend the Potter's house online. Jake's is anointed, Sarah Jake's is anointed. The, so they were church goers. And they understood what I meant by speaking against church systems. And it wasn't to these ungodly world. Like, what makes them so, so what, what, what makes them the world? Or, or let me say, what makes them non-believer? What make, cause they cuss. Because it's preachers that cuss across the pulpit. I've been in church too long, y'all. What, what, what makes them so worldly? Their lifestyle, how they live, they drink, they smoke, they sleep around. Uh, yeah, praise leaders all over across the country, gospel artists across the country, pastors, bishops, prophets all over the world. In my experience, and I've been in church for 48 years, do the same thing. It's not what the person does that makes them saved. It is not their behavior. It's not whether or not they're doing this or that. And the third, it is, have they repented of their sins and given their lives to Christ? And do we see the fruit of that? Because the people that you're saying that they're, they, they're in churches and you've seen all this stuff before, we have no, there's nothing if somebody's doing that and they're enjoying those things and they're continuing to do that and you're kind of talking about it like, like this is just, oh, this is normal. Like people do this all the time. Then I'm sorry. You're in circles of people who are just carnal and they're not believers. They aren't believers. They're not believers. If they're doing that and they're constantly in unrepentant sin, they are not believers. Not We're not saying that believers cannot struggle with sin for a period of time. And then even, even, even colossal sin. I mean, we, we look at David, look at King David, even to do very heinous sin, right? We're not saying that believers are not capable of that, but what we're saying is they're not going to stay in that place forever. There's going to be a time of repentance and we, and we, there is by no means any license for us to normalize that behavior and then to say that it is acceptable because some people are doing it or because you've seen a lot of people do it, then that behavior is now acceptable or uh, it's normal. Just say that it's normal. Maybe he's not saying it's acceptable. I won't say that, but he's saying that it's normal because you've seen that in certain cultures does not make that normal. So I just don't believe that that's the, that's the, to me, psychologically. And that's what I'm talking about. Not theologically, but psychologically and, and, and psychologically, the industries of the, the industries, the institutions of the church have trained us to believe like they're not. And we are like the elitism, like, nah, yo, they're all children of God. They're just lost. And until we see them that way, we can't even love them correctly. We can't even love them right. Loving them right is telling them that they are 
children of wrath by nature and they need to repent and, and give their lives to Christ or they will face eternal judgment. That's loving somebody. Seeing them walk off a cliff and walk towards their demise, seeing somebody walk towards their death and not say anything, that is not loving somebody. You could have turned somebody away from God. Saying what you said could have turned somebody away. <laughs> That's weak God syndrome to me, to me. I see that as weak. God is not weak, yo. If you want to draw somebody, he going to draw them. If you want to save somebody, he going to save them. If he got to speak to an ass to get your attention, he going to speak to through an ass. If he got to knock you off a horse to get your attention, he going to knock you off a horse. If he got to speak through a burning bush, he going to speak through a burning bush. Ain't nobody out of God's reach if you want to draw him. I don't care what Ty say on The Breakfast Club. I'm not that powerful. I don't believe I'm that powerful that the words I say can be taken so wrong that it'll draw somebody away from God. I didn't say nothing about God or nothing about Jesus. I was talking about the systems of church. And God is not weak. He's not weak. It's not, oh my gosh, since Ty said that, ugh, like God is not weak, yo. God is not weak. There's so many things wrong with what he just said there. It's kind of hard to see where to begin with this. But in a nutshell, this idea that, okay, because God is so powerful and God can draw anyone and, and basically reach anyone without the assistance of, of any, any person, right? Like God doesn't need anybody, right? So this idea that God doesn't need anybody to save somebody, right? Now, hint of truth in there. However, God has chosen, God has actually chosen to use what is described in Corinthians as the foolish things in this world, right? To confound the wise. Okay. He has chosen the foolishness of preaching the gospel. This is God's chosen way. The method that he has chosen the gospel message to save mankind. And that message is based on a reality of Jesus living a perfect life dying on the cross, being buried and resurrecting after three days because sin could not hold him down. It had no claim on him because he had not sinned. And he is now ascended and seated at the right hand of the father. And this is the God that we serve. And so this idea that we don't need to say anything or do anything because God is so powerful and he can reach anybody any way he wants, is so silly and it is actually disobedience when God is actually commanding us to do what go therefore go therefore and make disciples it is a command from God to go out and then to go and spread the gospel so to say that you're just going to sit down and do nothing because God can can reach anybody is actually disobedience this is like anti-missional theology that he's teaching you right now don't do anything. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it because God is so powerful. So if Ty Tribbett goes on the breakfast club and muddies the waters, it's okay because God is so powerful. He can still save everybody. If Ty Tribbett goes on the breakfast club and talks badly of the church, don't worry about it because if people want to go to church, uh, God will still get them to church and get, they'll just get saved. Like this is basically the, the conclusion of what he's trying to get to here, which is so dangerous, so irresponsible, so silly, and and it just it just shows a a, a lack of uh, reverence and even care for me. Like I, I just don't even see the passion for for obeying God's word in, in in the things that He says. I just I just don't see it. I don't see any of it. So so much more to say about this video, man. This could be literally we could go on and make like a two hour video discussing the problems theologically that we see in this video and we didn't even get in through the whole thing because it's just too much to get into to be honest there's too much to get into i would recommend that you watch uh berean babes's channel and watch the the live stream that she did on this video uh going into it man listen like this is a problem and we have a serious issue here with ty tribbett where 
Now, the response that he's given, this was supposed to be, uh, I mean, he wasn't trying to apologize, but the response is worse than the appearance on The Breakfast Club because it shows us that there are bigger problems with his theology than we even first uh, assumed there were. So there are major problems and he is actually showing himself to be disqualified from being a pastor in just a short video clip. He's showing us that he has a fundamental misunderstanding, lack of understanding of the nature of man. And therefore, if you have a lack of understanding of the nature of man, then the need for the gospel is also uh, erroneous or his, his, his understanding of it is poor and erroneous. And then that's leading to where a lack of a passion for true missions, right? For true mission, because he's downplaying the necessity of believers preaching the gospel and the work that God has given us to do, right? Good works that that God has given us to do to walk in beforehand. He is downplaying those things and simply saying that there's nothing that, that can prevent God from reaching somebody, even he himself doing dumb things on a show. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, tell a friend to tell a friend and If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. All right. God bless y'all. And I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace.